receive anything in this service this morning, it's going to be because of Him, not because of me. So church, when we're singing because He lives, when we're talking about life is worth living just because He lives, that's what it matters. That's what it all boils down to is because He lives. You all know today is Friends and Family Day. We're going to have a big meal. Don't worry. I'm not going to take that away from you. And I had a whole message planned and centered around the theme of family. I don't know if the Lord's going to allow me to get to all of it or not. Probably not. (laughs) But as TC was singing that song, that second verse says how sweet to hold a newborn baby. (laughs) And to feel the pride and the joy that he brings. It's no secret, Grayson and Ashley are some of our closest friends. So as we were singing that, I I just kind of looked up and happened to see Brantley (laughs) laying there asleep this morning. Church, even though Brantley's not my own child, (laughs) He's not my flesh and blood. He's brought pride and He's brought joy to my family because of our relationship with Him. So when we continued to sing, it hit home a little bit differently when we said, but greater still, the calm assurance that that child can face Uncertain days because He lives. Those of you that are parents in this place this morning, you know what it is to care about your kids so much and not know what the days are going to hold ahead. Not know what the future is going to be ahead. But church, because He lives this morning, it doesn't matter what the future may hold. And it's not just for the kids that we have, those under us. It doesn't matter what our futures may hold. I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live questioning, am I going to make it through this? Because the Lord came down to this earth. He came down in, in the flesh and blood, man. And was willing to go to a cross for you and for me. And to carry our sins. And to die a sinner's death. So that we could be free. And because He lives today. It doesn't matter what the future holds. We can face it. Because He's on our side. Now to get to the family aspect of this, just a little bit more. I'm not going to hold you long. Famous last words. (laughs) I'm thankful this morning that Chelsea and TC were able to come and drive from Virginia and be here with us, spend the weekend with us. I'm thankful this morning that Minty was able to drive up and uh, surprise us, didn't know she was going to be here this morning. And I'm thankful that I have my flesh and blood family here in this place this morning. It just does something different for you. 
It gives you some encouragement along the way. It gives you some strength along the way. Because my family is here. But as I said as well, Grayson and Ashley are some of our closest friends. And somewhere along the lines of 3 o'clock in the morning one morning, Grayson and Sarah set up and went through every ancestry website they could find and traced it back to apparently their cousins because Noah was their grandfather somewhere along the way or something. But even in that, there's no real flesh and blood family ties that we have one to another. But you see, that's my family. People aren't going to come against them and not have to also deal with me because they're my family. I'm going to fight for them. I'm going to defend them. I'm going to do anything in my power to protect them. Because they're my family. Our relationship is close enough that we've made decisions along the way that it doesn't mean that we always get along with each other. If you want to see two people fight, come find me and Grayson around the assembly time. <laughs> We can put on a pretty good fight for you. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I've said it many times before, and I'll continue to say it. There's nobody that I would rather work alongside of than Grayson because he's my family. Because we built a bond with one another that we know what each other's thinking probably before we even think it. <laughs> We know what the other person's going to do. And we've built that relationship. Ashley says we're family because we know too many embarrassing facts about one another now. And we can't stand to be torn apart or else somebody's going to get in trouble along the way. But you see, they're not flesh and blood. But they're still family. By choice, they're family. But you see then it goes another step farther. Because this morning I'm also thankful that I have my Southside family here today. You see, three months ago, three and a half months ago, I didn't have a Southside family. I did. I just didn't really know them all that well. Hadn't been here that much. Hadn't got the chance to interact with you, Sister Sutton, and get to know you a little bit better. Hadn't ever got to meet you before, Sister Christine. But this morning... I have a family here at Southside because I'm willing to go whatever the length is for you. Because I'm willing to fight for you. I'm going to protect you with everything that I have because you're my family. Because I care about you. I said in one of my first services here, somewhere along the line, I'm going to say or do something that you're not going to like. Whether that time has come yet or not, hold on, we're getting there. I changed the pulpits out this morning. And that time came for Brother Nick. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, we're still family. We may not always see exactly eye to eye. 
We may not always necessarily like what one another is doing or how they're doing it. But at the end of the day, we're still family. We care about one another. And if Brother Nick came to me after service and he said, listen, I hate that pulpit. I want the old one back. We'll have the old one back by Wednesday. It may not be what I want, but we're family. And I care enough about you, Brother Nick, that that's okay with me to lay my want aside so that we can come together and we can make sure that we're in line with one another. Brother Chris brought it up about Abraham in our Sunday school lesson this morning. And Lot, humility caused Abraham to say, I don't want to cause division within my family, so you choose. You make the decision. You do what you think is best. Church, when we're a family, it doesn't matter anymore what I want. It matters what it takes to cause us all to bind together and to come a little bit closer to one another and get a little bit stronger with one another and fight a little bit more for one another and carry each other's burdens just a little bit more. But the truth of the matter is, I can go even beyond that this morning. And you see, I always tease Brother Atticon, pick on him. I took him to Rossville with me last week, and I told the church there that he's my preach test dummy, I think is how I labeled him. Anytime I need an example or anything else, He's my dummy. I get to use him. <laughs> but you see, Brother Atkin isn't my flesh and blood. And he's my friend and I care about him deeply. But our relationship hasn't been there long enough for us to necessarily be that family tie. And he's not a member here at Southside so you don't fall into that category either. But you see, Brother Atkin is my brother in Christ. And because of the blood of Jesus, we're family. Though we may not have the same DNA strands to go back to and link us together, because of the blood of Jesus, we have the same blood flowing through our veins. And church today, I'm thankful for the family that may not even just be here at Southside, but we've got family all across this world because the blood of Jesus flows through their veins. Why is all this so important this morning? Because in the beginning, God created everything. And he's, the Bible says that He saw it was not good for man to be alone. Church, it's not good for you to be alone. The first organization, the first institution God organized was the family. Because He realized the importance of the family. The need of the family. Church today, you need a family. Not just your blood and your, your flesh, that DNA that links you together with them, but you need brothers and sisters in Christ that can come along beside you, that can encourage you when you need encouragement, that can give you a little kick on the rear end when it's time to get back in line, that can give you what you need in the moment that you need it, not because they're great, but because God is working through them and through His blood, you have a family bond. Church, I know I, I, I titled this thing, it's my own fault. 
I titled this day Friends and Family Day back a month and a half ago when we first started planning for it. This isn't Friends and Family Day. This is Family Day. Because Sister Cammie, you're not just my friend. You're family. And though you may look around here today and you may not have flesh and blood family here in this building with you today. We're family. And we've got each other here this morning. Church, we're family with one another. Don't be alone. Don't feel alone. We're fighting for one another. We're going to keep on pushing each other forward. We're going to keep on encouraging one another. And the thing with family is, it doesn't matter the decisions that are made. We're still family. As much as I don't want to claim TC as my brother-in-law, it doesn't matter the decisions that he makes in his life. There's nothing that can change the fact that he's my family. And I can say that about him because I always tease him and he knows I love him. Church, it doesn't matter the decisions that any one of us make. We're family today. And at any point in time in the future that you need somebody, we're still family. It doesn't matter what's happened between now and then. We're still family. And we're still here for one another. Stand with me this morning. Guess I better put a scripture in this thing. Galatians, the fourth chapter says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of, of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Just as Christ was the Son of God. The Bible tells us through the spirit of adoption, we can also be children of God here this morning. And because of that spirit of adoption, we're joint heirs with Christ. I don't know about you, but I've always secretly hope that somewhere along the line I had some unknown uncle that was rich that was going to leave me a whole bunch of money. It ain't happened yet. <laughs> Probably never will happen is the truth of it. And while I may not be heir to a fortune here on this earth, Church, I'm heir to all the gold, all the riches, all the wonderful things that could ever be thought of and imagined. Because I'm a joint heir with Christ. There's a song 
that Sister Janet introduced me to back years ago at BTI. It says, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's family. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's family. Church, I need you. And you need me. I want us to pray here together this morning that the Lord would bind us together and draw us closer as a family. Brother Atticon's not from Southside. Grace and Ashley aren't from Southside. But we still need to be drawn closer together as a family. The Pope family, you're not from Southside. But we still need to be drawn closer together as a family. Jason, we need to be drawn closer together as a family. Because if we're going to do what the Bible says, and if we're all going to make it to heaven, it's because we're one big family. Making it together. So I want us to pray together that the Lord would help us draw closer together as one family. Let's pray together here this morning. Lord, I thank you so 